show you how bass fishing is supposed to go. Catching them left and right, one right after the other, and pretty good size, too. We were fortunate enough to spend an evening in this local honey hole. Today, Gabe and I, along with John Benedict from the American Sportsman Club, were targeting largemouth bass in Emily City. And we were keeping it simple. A little boat, a couple of rods, and some pink bubblegum floating worms was all that was needed. This land is one of many properties leased by the ASC for its members to use on a timeshare-like basis. Once a member, all they have to do is reserve the land, and it's solely theirs for that time. Today, John invited us along, and I asked him what this particular land had to offer. A lot of canals, a lot of man-made ponds, and uh, was the, probably the best duck hunting spot we had uh, last year for last season. No one really fished it, though. Um, I think last weekend when I came out, I was the discoverer of the fact that it had big bass and it had pike in here, too. So uh, it, it's uh, just a maze of, of um, canals that connect these little lakes. The one that, that we're going to fish a little later is kind of a uh, uh, clear one, not like this where it's overgrown with weeds. Uh, there's some beaver in there. I think they've kept it clear, and uh, that's why I had the best luck when I came out before. I've my hand. Oh, <laughs> that's a little nice one. <laughs> That's a good one, John. He's going to measure it and see if it's master angler. I think it takes 22 inches to master. Is that right, John? Yeah, 22 inches. It looks like this one's real close. He's a fat one, though. It's about 19 inches. Well, it looks bigger than that. You got him? I got him. You do got him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I took and I threw up right here next to shore and I saw a bass about 15 feet this way of uh, where I threw it in. And so I figured, well, I better reel in, you know, and get it, uh, get it back out there to him. I started to reel in, and he took off for it and nailed it. <laughs> a great spot. This is uh, land that the American Sportsman's Club has uh, for their members. And I'll tell you what, by the looks of that, and John says these are the small ones, so let's get him back in. We certainly had a productive fishing spot today. But the technique was hot as well. I asked John to explain what was working to keep catching them here today. Well, we're fishing with, with uh, just a floating worm. And it, uh, you hook it in the middle. It's called whacking style. Um, and when it, when it sits on the water, you can just jiggle it a little bit, and it just makes an, it's an action that's pretty hard for them to resist. And up in this kind of uh, terrain, I think these, these bass eat just about anything that hits the water, anything they put their mind to. But with this much cover and this much vegetation that comes right down to the water, I'm sure bugs are falling in the water and, and frogs and all sorts of things uh, that they feed on around the edges. So this has been around a while and it hasn't been fished. I, I just think nobody's thought to come back here and, and uh, seriously try to find one, try to catch these. Good to see what was doing all that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe 15 inches or so. Yeah, pretty fish. Nice and dark. Oh, 
those big gap hooks do for you right there. Yeah. When that hook goes down in there, it circles around and it catches them right in the lip most of the time. A wide gap hook will do that for you. I'll slide that back down and she's ready to go. With so many fish being caught, I was itching to put down the camera and get a rod in my hand. Gabe took the camera for me and let me give it a try. The thrill is infectious, bouncing worm across the surface, watching and waiting for a fish to dine. <laughs> and dine he did. This type of fishing is a lot of fun. The nervous excitement is in the air as you're bouncing the worm across the surface, knowing that a fish could strike if it looks this right. And this is the reward, a nice largemouth on the hook. Yeah, right in the lip. Not too bad. That's fun. <laughs> Pretty hard not to catch them out here, though. Nice little one. Another little one. Oh, no. Look at how I got here. Oh, oh. Woo. Where did he come from? Uh, Whoops. <laughs> so not what we're looking for, but the first hike of the day. So we moved on to some new water, and as soon as I gave Gabe his rod back, he had another fish on the line. Excitement was high, and it seemed each fish was more fun to catch than the one before it. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yep. There he is. Saw his lips. Not bad. That's a good fish there. Yeah. Look at the size of that mouth. <laughs> Woo wee! Alright, here we go. You want to have some grow up, right? Yep. Yeah. Not bad. Nice fish. Woo wee! Still using the same technique? <laughs> same technique. That one came from about 10 feet down the shore. I saw a big old weight. Whoosh! <laughs> and he nailed it, man. It's just like that bubble gum worm, I'll tell you. Oh! <laughs> These things. I haven't fished topwater bass in, uh, since I was a little kid at night. And, uh, wow! I remember why I loved it back then. Oh, my goodness. You see on TV was a peacock bass down in South America. You, you reel and they just blast it. These bass were keeping it interesting. Although many had to be freed of the weeds just to get a look at them, it doesn't get much better than this. This type of fishing can be done all over Michigan this time of year. It doesn't take much to enjoy enticing some fish with a floating worm. Largemouth bass are found across the state, and they're just waiting for you to get out there and play for an hour or an entire day. Grab a pole and go enjoy your time outdoors. What do you think, 18 or so? It was definitely a day to remember, and it appeared these spicy thin fish enjoyed their day showing off for us, right here on the beautiful Michigan water. Welcome to the American Wildlife Association providing families affordable access to the wondrous outdoor world. The lure of a quiet outdoor adventure away from a city has persuaded this family to escape for the open spaces on private American Wildlife Association land. The demand for outdoor activities is steadily increasing. Over 80 million Americans participate in some kind of outdoor recreation. Many parents would like their children to experience life without televisions with remote controls, telephones and cell phones, the abundance of junk food, video games and the constant hectic schedule of social, athletic and school events, even if it's only for a weekend. I think if any family enjoys the outdoors and the wilderness, AWA would be wonderful for them because, uh, again, you have um, 